Bills, Patriots, buckle up, Buttercup. I'm so fired up for Thursday night football tonight with major playoff implications. And make sure we're clear, there is no excuse for Mr. Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. Look, right now as we speak, New England is in the hunt. They are not a playoff team. Buffalo, 8-3, number one wild card team. But Buffalo has bigger fish to fry. And I told you earlier this week that I think that Kansas City is going to lose against Cincinnati. And I have San Francisco taking care of Miami. And that all matters when it comes to Thursday night football. Because the Buffalo Bills, people say, oh, the schedule is tough down the stretch. And Brandon Bean announced today the general manager, the Von Miller, is going on IR. So he's going to miss the next four games. Earliest he come back is week 17 against Cincinnati. Look, the Buffalo Bills, it's all there. And that includes winning the division. They have four division games left, two with the Patriots. Home games against the Jets and the Miami Dolphins. Four of the remaining six are in the division. And this is all about winning the division, getting the one seed, and I don't want to hear about injuries as an excuse. Josh Allen, you saw what he did on Thanksgiving, the throw to Stephon Diggs, and obviously taking care of business, utilizing his weapons on CBS on Thanksgiving. And listen, Josh Allen, I know he's had the red zone issues, whatever. He is phenomenal in his career going up against a Bill Belichick coach defense and specifically recently and last year, the playoff game, I mean, they didn't even punt. I mean, it was just sheer domination. And I, I think we're going to get more of the same tonight. And Von Miller not being there, he's a great player, eight sacks this year. You know, he's like Mariano Rivera in terms of that big game experience. And he's a closer. He closes out wins. I don't care. No excuse. Mac Jones isn't that good. Patriots aren't that good. They just lost to Kirk Cousins in prime time. I expect Josh Allen to play brilliantly. I still, we're raising the bar here on the Buffalo Bills. I still expect the Buffalo Bills to get the one seed, still go to the Super Bowl. That's how we're going to judge the season. And it starts tonight. I have the Buffalo Bills beating the New England Patriots 27-16. to That's our guy Patrick Peterson speaking the truth about Kyler Murray. And my favorite part of that clip is Brian McFadden just taken aback by the honesty from Peterson. Because it's true. Because Kyler Murray doesn't care and Kyler Murray will never get it. So, and look, this is not a voice from the grave yesteryear, Patrick Peterson. He's still an active NFL ball player. Go ask a Bills fan. He had the interceptions against Buffalo playing for the Minnesota Vikings. And Patrick Peterson spent time in Arizona with Kyler Murray. And Kyler Murray took to Twitter. And obviously, he cursed again. That's what's whited out. You on some weird bleep. P squared talking about Patrick Peterson and basically saying, all right, you're trying to grow the podcast. I mean, listen, Kyler Murray post game on Sunday said when asked about the second quarter and issues against the Chargers, systematically we're bleaked. Then you got to remember when he had the sideline altercation with Cliff Kingsbury and he started cursing at him a few weeks ago. Kyler Murray is terrible when it matters the most. His career numbers in November, December, January, and crunch time, they are downright deplorable. I hated the draft pick. You know that I did. We would have drafted Nick Bosa in a heartbeat. He was the best player in that draft. He's tormented the Arizona Cardinals for years. And I don't want to turn Cliff Kingsbury into Vince Lombardi here, but... I mean, I'm clearly on Team Cliff as opposed to Team Kyler. The Arizona Cardinals, their offense is in the toilet. I mean, Kyler Murray was showed you the November, the December, the January numbers. He was in one playoff game in his career, and he urinated down his leg. I mean, he was dreadful last year, the wild card round, against the Rams. 
Kyler Murray, they have to put a clause in his contract to actually study film and work hard. He's more interested in video games, and we destroyed Arizona for that contract. I mean, Arizona, I didn't pick them as a playoff team because of Cliff and Kyler. And Cliff is likely going to lose his job because of the record. Is the same Kyler Murray who had his agent issue that press release, destroying the Cardinals in the wintertime for not giving him that new contract. And once they did in the summer, and they had that clause in, I said, congrats to the Cardinals on never winning a Super Bowl. You can't do anything real or spectacular with Kyler Murray as your quarterback. Kyler Murray is selfish. You talk to people around Arizona, he's not the first one in. He's not the last one to leave. I don't know another quarterback who has that kind of clause in his contract. The Cardinals took it out because of the bad PR, but... Listen, this is obviously a major issue of Kyler not getting it, Kyler being selfish, Kyler not showing respect to his head coach, taking to Twitter to go at Patrick Peterson, and I know there are a lot of people around Arizona not in their heads, yes, as they were listening to Patrick Peterson on his podcast. Welcome back, Time to Shine. Thrilled to be joined by my guy, CBS Sports NFL analyst, the great Trent Green, who's going to be on the call for Sunday's matchup between the Ravens and the Broncos on CBS. And Trent, Lamar Jackson, limited in practice. The team hasn't been crisp the last couple of weeks. Great record, but I don't consider the Ravens a truly great team. They've had trouble this year finishing games. There's a lot there. How would you assess the Ravens? And do you think they're capable of going on a run in January? Well, hey, Adam, it's great to join you. I I do think the Ravens have the ability to make a run here late in the season. You know, it's easy to point at the the games they've lost. Uh, If you look at all four of those games, three of them they had a double-digit lead in and, and lost the game. And then last week against Jacksonville, had a nine point lead in the fourth quarter and lost that one. So we could be sitting here talking about 11 and 0 Baltimore team. Now, the problem is, and as we've heard over the years, you know, your record is what it is. And, and right now the Ravens are seven and four. In reality, they're still in first place. They've got the tiebreaker over the Cincinnati Bengals. They played them the last week of the season. The Ravens, their defense has improved drastically. When you look at the start of the season to now, the last eight games they're averaging up just 290 yards, uh, allowing 290 yards of offense per game in that span. They're not allowing teams to run the football, which I think is something that Denver is going to have to do in order to win this game. They've been able to put pressure on the quarterback. Listen, this team is not a dynamic passing team. This is a team that wants to run the football, wants to control time of possession, wants to get first downs. And when the opportunity is there to take a big play, to take a big pass up the field, they will do that. So, the components are all there for them to uh, to have success, especially as the temperature starts to get cold and, and you have to come into Baltimore or anywhere else for that matter, even if it ends up being Buffalo as the number one seed uh, or Kansas City. I mean, those are cold places. You need to be able to run the football when it's cold and play good defense. So the pieces are there for them to make a run. They just have to figure out ways to finish football games when you look at those four losses. Very well said. Now, why is this season, in your opinion, talking to people, studying the film, why has it been, Trent, such a major struggle for Russell Wilson in Denver this year? Well, I think I think there's several things that go into this. I, I think the expectations, the pressure of coming in and that type of trade, that type of contract, it, it's nothing new for him, but it's all of a sudden that adds more pressure to the coaching staff as well. Listen, we gotta make we've gotta make this work. We've we've uh, you know, given away or or traded all these draft picks and and put the cap in position from a salary cap standpoint. So there are several things there, the pressure of it all. Uh, It's a new system for Russ. It's it's a new terminology for him. It's not the same thing that he's run his whole career. So to me, it looks like he's a little bit slower with his footwork in terms of going through his progressions. You know, his progressions and shoulders and things that he used to do in Seattle, it was always something we talked about, about being such a dynamic player. You see, it's just a, maybe a, a tick slow or a hair slow compared to what it was in Seattle. So I think some of it's him just learning the offense and knowing where to go, go with the football on a quicker basis. I think all those pieces are there. And then a big part of it and a big reason why I think he's he's struggled is the pass protection. He just hasn't had very much time. And, and you know, he's sitting here at 34 years old now, not 24, 25, 26 years old. So uh whether or not he can he can run the same move the same all those things you know if you listen to him and his mobility and all the the numbers that he's putting up 
uh, as far as his conditioning and those kinds of things, it's all still there. But the reaction time is different when you're 34 compared to 25, 26, 27. So uh, protection's been a big issue for him. He hasn't been able to sit in the pocket, work the progressions. Uh, he's relying too much on getting outside the pocket and, and making throws on the move. And then it's and then it's the new offense. So I, I think there's several things that are factors for him. That's a superb breakdown. I, I like that. There's a lot of depth there, Trent. And listen, you saw the genius of Justin Herbert up close and personal last week. How would you describe what makes him so special? You know, I, I'm a, I've been a big fan of Justin Herbert since he came out of college, and, and I think he has all the tools there to have uh, have long-term success. Uh, I would like to obviously see them get into the postseason and have some postseason success um, just to help uh, validate what it is we all think of him, right? His size is there. Uh, the strength is there. The arm strength is there. He does have decent mobility for a guy as tall as he is. So uh, I think that, uh, that he's eventually going to end up being – you know, one of the elite quarterbacks in this league. I, I think it's just, it's a matter of winning football games. That That's the number one thing that you always come back to for a quarterback. But, you know, getting the win last week in the manner that they did, that was a game that they really needed just to stay in the hunt of the playoff picture. They're sitting there just outside the wild card right now, sitting at six and five right there with, uh, with New England. So they're right there knocking on the door. I think for this team to take the next step after what they did a year ago, where they lost in, in week 17 or lost their 17th game against the Raiders, um, you know, that, that made it difficult for them. So if they, can, if they can find a way to get into the playoffs, which I think they have the ability to do, uh, I think that'll be a, a big step for, uh, for Justin Herbert in this offense and for the team moving forward. Without question. Yeah, postseason, big deal. I love Justin Herbert. Loved him coming out of school as well. And he has really been outstanding in every possible way. And Trent... We got into it at length yesterday. I think Patrick Mahomes is the clear MVP favorite. Six weeks left, long way to go. What's your take? Well, I agree with you, Adam. I, I, I think that uh, you have to say he's the front runner. And uh, I just have to remind you, me, and everyone else that a month ago we were saying Josh Allen was the right. front runner for the MVP because of the way he was playing. So there is a lot of football to go. There's still six games to go. Uh, you got to look at what Jalen Hurts is doing in Philadelphia. You got to look at what Tua Tonga Vailoa is doing in Miami. I like throwing in uh, Parsons from, uh, you got to throw in a defensive guy, so throw him in there as well. Uh, you know, if Tennessee gets on a roll and Derrick Henry setting records, you got to throw him in the mix. So there's a number of Nick Bosa in San Francisco. Yeah. If he uh, keeps being as disruptive as he is, there's a lot of guys you can throw in the mix. Uh, but I would agree with you that Patrick Mahomes, what he's doing, uh, the fact that the AFC West was supposed to be up in the air, and there's no way that the Chiefs can do it again uh, after winning the division so many times in a row, and there's no way they can get back to the AFC Championship game because they lost Tyreek Hill. Uh, the fact that he's putting up the numbers that he is uh, is, is pretty amazing. So I, I would agree with you, Adam, that he's the front runner right now. Great stuff. Trent, thank you so much for joining us. And, of course, you can catch Trent alongside Kevin Harlan, Melanie Collins, this Sunday at 1 p.m. as the Broncos take on the Ravens on CBS. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. And don't forget to hit the bell for more videos.